At a very basic level, with spatial analysis, we define the spatial location of entities that are being studied. Spatial analysis affords us the opportunity to measure properties and relationships of spatial data by taking into account the spatial locations of the phenomena that we are studying. Methods of spatial analysis can be fairly simple, but they can also be very sophisticated. Sure, many sophisticated mathematical spatial analysis tools exist in GIS software applications, though keep in mind that the human eye and brain are also very sophisticated processors of geographic data and are very good detectors of anomalies and patterns in spatial data. Spatial analysis includes all of the methods that can be applied to geographic information assets, including manipulations and transformations. And as a result, we can add value to the original data and create new geographic information assets that support decision making as they may reveal patterns and anomalies that were not immediately obvious in the original data. We can use spatial analysis to detect patterns in two-dimensional space and discover whether arbitrary map features are related in some way. Most maps created by cartographers represent a snapshot in time. Sure, they're cool, but wouldn't it be more cool if we could map time? Now, I'm not talking about mapping the locations of watches or clocks or the cooking herb of parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Who sang that song? I think it was Simon and Garfunkel. Instead, ArcMap provides us with a pretty cool tool, I consider it pretty garfunkly, to, in a sense, time-enable our spatial data. We can visualize change in spatial data over time and observe when things occur and visualize how patterns evolve over time. Next, we'll take a look at the time slider to animate our maps. A water well, which is a structure created by digging a hole in the ground or driving or boring a hole in the ground, is an important part of human civilization. Water provides life. Wells can vary greatly in depth and water volume. And sure, it's pretty obvious, every well has a spatial location. Imagine that for every well that was drilled, someone mapped the location and the date the well was drilled. I think it would be pretty cool if we could animate when the wells were drilled. For a given region, this might provide an indication of the growth over time of human civilization. I've opened a fresh copy of ArcMap. With the catalog window open, we will expand the subfolder called Wells. We see a file geodatabase called Project 404 and a feature dataset called Wells and a feature class called Montana Counties. We will drag the counties to our map while in data view. Double click on the existing symbol and change it to a hollow symbol and click OK. Once again, open the catalog window and drag the feature class called Water Wells to our project. Let's view the underlying attribute table for Water Wells. Right-click, Open Attribute Table. There appears to be a field describing the type, which is a well, the total depth of the well, the yield in gallons per minute, and a field indicating when the well was drilled. This is awesome. We need a date field in order to animate or use the time slider time enabled temporally amazing ArcGIS desktop option. So what do you think I'm overly exuberant about this time enabled mapping of spatial features? Well, I hope you will be too. Just wait and see. This is pretty cool. We also observe that there's over 222,000 records in this data set. Next, we'll set up the foundation so we can use the time slider window. Double click on water wells in the table of contents to invoke the layer properties dialog box. Make the time tab active. All right, this is pretty simple. Place a checkbox next to enable time on this layer. As we observed earlier, the geographic information asset storing information on wells has a single time field as opposed to a start and end time. The field in the attribute table storing the time information is called comp underscore date. We'll choose it from the pull-down list here. The format of this field is primarily date, though we'll choose date slash time. We'll set the time step interval to years. Apparently, some of the well data dates back to the 1800s. To determine the layer time extent, 
click the Calculate button, which will automatically look at and analyze the range of dates within our time field. From what I observed, the data does change frequently, so we'll place a checkbox next to Data Changes Frequently, so Calculate Time Extent Automatically. We don't necessarily need to set the time zone, but this is data for Montana, which is in the mountain time zone. All right, very good. That should at least set a foundation for us to create an initial time slider or animation map. Well, I believe, well, there's a lot of wells in this geographic information asset. And well, let's make it happen. All right, next we will click on the time slider icon as part of the tools toolbar. You may note that the time slider window has a level of transparency or opacity, which may seem a little funky, though there's a reason for this. By adjusting the transparency of this window, we'll be able to see the controls and the underlying data. Therefore, the animation we're about to perform won't be obscured by the window. To modify the transparency of this window, click on the options icon from the dialog box, make the other tab active, and then adjust the time slider window transparency. Let's play the animation using the time slider window. Click on the small play button here. As the time slider bar moves, we are presented with map information, spatial data, along with a timestamp indicating the approximate temporal snapshot of the data being presented. Now what's interesting about this animation is we are being presented with a series of data flashes these flashes reflect the spatial locations of the wells and provide an indication of the temporal period of when they were drilled. Sure, this animation has the potential to be useful, though let's make an attempt to retain all of the points representing wells from the beginning of the animation to the end. Let's invoke the time slider options. Click on the options icon. Make the time display tab active. We'll set the time step interval to two years for the variable time window will enter a value of 200 years. Therefore, we'll be able to see a total of 200 years worth of data. Other options we could adjust include a time extent and the playback speed, though we'll keep these for the most part the same, and then click OK. Our hope is that the time slider window will let us visually analyze the spatial locations of the wells and the temporal or time period during which data were collected for this spatial asset. This is often referred to as the transaction time. The term transaction time is the time period during which the fact, or in this case, the well information is stored in the database. Well, let's make it happen. Click on the play button. It appears as if during the early 1800s, note the years being shown here, there was very little activity, probably because there weren't a lot of people that had settled in Montana at this time. Let's see what happens after 1909, which is when the Homestead Act was revised, and it greatly affected the settlement of people in Montana. This Homestead Act, in a sense, gave away free land of up to 160 acres per family. And then, of course, the horse was replaced with the automobile. More roads were built, more people moved here, more people needed water to irrigate their crops, and holy moly, those are a lot of wells. Viewing temporal databases that store the history of an event can tell a pretty powerful story. Although the scale of this map is relatively small and the points are really tightly clustered together, we can observe a series of patterns and regions that have many wells. Let's try this. Let's zoom into the northern part of Gallatin County and rerun the animation. Presenting a larger scale map will reveal more detail in this area. Once again, we can see clusters. Now, note that currently in the table of contents, all of the wells are being displayed with a single red dot. We're not limited to this. We can modify the symbol in any way we wish. The time slider window will use any symbol we establish for our spatial data. Let's try this. After invoking the layer properties dialog box for the wells, click on the symbology tab. Let's use a graduated color symbol showing the yield of each well in gallons per minute. We'll choose graduated colors, and the value field will be set to yield. Click apply and OK. And now we're being presented with even more information. The wells represented with a darker color apparently had a greater yield. When working with spatial data, if we don't know that something exists, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Dr. Carl Sagan, the astronomer, once said, The absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. 
We need to question every spatial data set we use or receive. Just because there's an absence of evidence, or there aren't wells in certain locations, does not necessarily indicate that there's evidence of absence, or in other words, that wells do not exist there. Maybe they were not mapped, or maybe something happened to the data. Data may have been lost. We have been hired to work with a documentary film producer who's creating a film on the American West and the settlement of the Western territories after 1830. They would like to incorporate the well animation into their movie. Let's export the animation to a Microsoft AVI file so that the producer of the movie can use it. For reference, we've added a high-resolution proprietary satellite image of Montana. Focusing on the time slider window, let's click on this small graphic icon that looks like a strip of film. In the text entry box next to file name, we'll enter a new name for the animation. To view the video export properties, click Options. To modify or enter a custom frame per second rate, place a checkbox here and then enter the new frame rate or the total number of frames. Let's modify the horizontal and vertical resolution. Place a checkbox here, and we'll enter a horizontal resolution of 945 and a vertical resolution, or a height, of 576. After clicking the Export button, we're presented with a video compression dialog box. We'll keep the compression quality set to 90. Note the compressor is set to Microsoft Video 1. Click OK to begin the export. Before exporting the video, we may wish to click on the Options button. Open the Time Slider Options dialog box and click the Playback tab, and then select Play in Specified Duration. When creating a high-resolution video, sometimes exporting the video without a codec or without an encoder-decoder method, the output video will be much finer in resolution. Another option is to use a video codec that does not use lossy compression. A wide variety of free codecs are available for download at www.free-codec.com. The number of frames per second in the export video can make or break the video. If the value is set too low, we may lose some of the important animation as part of our video. If we set the frames per second to a high number, like 60 for example, we may end up with a fairly large video. In North America, typically a frame rate of 29.97 frames per second is used for most television shows. The dominant television standard in Europe, called PAL, delivers 25 frames per second. After the export is completed, the output video can be loaded into a nonlinear video editing software package and incorporated into a movie, such as a documentary movie. Hey, well that's a wrap. It was nice to have your company during this tutorial. My name is Jerry Fogart, and I am wishing you the very best. Thank you.